Hello, everyone. Welcome to volume number 27, Photography Class, <laughs> taught by Carmine in New York. Hello, everyone. Uh, Happy New Year's Eve. Uh, it's December 31st, 2021. Let's hope that next year, 2022, is full of film and cameras and digital cameras and lenses and getting out and photographing as much as we can. Uh, and don't forget, print your pictures. All right. Uh, for this New Year's Eve special, we're going to talk about some gear. Some 1950s medium format gear. Medium format gear, that should cost you around 20 bucks if you shop right. And I'm going to tell you how to shop right for a gear like this. Uh, before we get into it, please comment below. Hit the subscribe button right here. Burp, 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 burp. Just hit that subscribe button if you would, please. Um, hit the like button and email me. Email me about anything. I've gotten so many good emails for questions. And pretty soon, I think we'll start the new year with another episode of questions and answers that I've gotten through my email. Uh, go to my website com. you'll see all of my photographs for the last few years anyway not the last 48 years <laughs> it was before websites um high resolution photographs i don't sell anything don't worry i don't even sell a t-shirt uh it'll list the gear i use for each picture the date the place and you'll see this camera the photographs that this camera took on the website and you will be shocked okay uh what do we have here today this is the adox adox right here the adox golf and the word golf you probably won't be able to read it it's just an embossment but it says golf here right here i had to write it here because it's so hard to read here okay this is made in approximately 1959. It's the model 63S. And why? what what makes this different than the uh, model 63? And by the way, 63 comes from the maximum aperture, which is 6.3. This is the 63S because it has the Pronto shutter. It's a great shutter. The lens is a 75 millimeter lens. Um... It's not really multi-coated. It might be single-coated. I see one. I see one purple reflection in there. Okay, uh, but it doesn't matter. What matters is, is that the lens was clear, right? No haze, no fungus, no scratches, right? Nice and clean. What matters is, is that this is a medium-format camera. It takes two and a quarter inch by two and a quarter inch negatives it uses 120 film black and white or color with this camera because the shutter speed uh, you only have four choices of, of shutter speed plus b you have 125th 150th 1 100th and 1 200th of a second plus b that's it your faster shutter speed the one two hundredth of a second. So you don't want to use a film outside in the bright sunlight that has two, like a 400 ASA. You may not be able to stop it down enough. I mean, yes, the shutter, the, sorry, the aperture does go down to f22. Uh, but you know what? The sweet spot of this lens, I figured, I've done a lot of experimenting with the sweet spots f8 to get the best quality out of this lens this 1950s lens all right so at f8 if you had 400 iso speed film it might be too fast might be too sensitive so just use 100 asa or iso film okay uh i have a lot of things to say this was made in uh germany by the adox company uh the adox name is still around uh, for you guys and girls that uh, know about Adox, you, you know that you can find Adox Rodinol, black and white film developer. You can find Adox Film, okay? But 
Um, it's not from the original Adox company. Like this camera is from the original Adox company. All right. Uh, quick uh, little history about the name Adox. Um, the brand name was sold in 1962 from the Adox company. They folded up the original Adox company, the company that made this camera. They folded up. They sold the name to DuPont. DuPont owned this brand name, Adox, from 62 to 1999. Uh, then in 99, Agfa. Uh, let's see. Then uh, Agfa bought it uh, in 1999. You know, Agfa, that they made film. Then in 2003, very interesting, Agfa did not uh, renew their license for the Adox brand name and a company in 2003, Photo IMPEX in Berlin. They now own the brand name Adox, and they are the ones that are producing all brand new Adox products like film and developers. All right, very interesting. Uh, I myself use Adox Rodenol and obviously an Adox camera. Uh, so let's see. Um, this is not a rangefinder, okay? This is just has a viewfinder, all right? It's just a piece of glass in the front and a very small glass viewfinder in the in the rear, all right? But it's enough. It's nice and bright. You can you can frame your pictures nicely, all right? It has a cold shoe, not a hot shoe. Very simple, very simple to use. It has a um, here's your your film advance, okay? Uh, it doesn't stop like, let's say like a Roloflex. It doesn't stop when you've gotten to the next frame. You have to use the red window. Now, this is gaffer's tape, which I recommend you guys use to, to stop any light leaks, okay? So you just advance the film till the next frame number comes up and then just put your gaffer's tape back on top. Uh, let's keep going. This camera, a little, it has a little advancement from, from back in the day. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but there's a little hole here. That little hole right now is the color red. All right. That means you're good to go. Meaning, uh, not that it's, not that it's cocked. You have to manually cock the shutter. But what it, that red dot means is that you've advanced the film and you won't get a double exposure. It was double exposure, not really prevention, but it was a double exposure alert. Okay? Take the picture. All right? Now it went to black. All right? That means that if you cock the shutter when it's on black, whoop, um, you could get another double exposure. Let's see. Oh, oh yeah, you have to... Put your finger way down here to to take a double exposure. So it's pretty it's pretty um, high tech for the day. All right, you have to jump through hurdles to actually take a double exposure, but it's possible. But they really wanted you to to prevent prevent you from taking a double exposure. Okay, now this line on here, I put this line on because. Um, show you i'll show you this this is actually another whole class but uh this camera i loaded with 35 millimeter film also okay um you just use this uh this is made uh put this online this is, was made by a 3d printer all right this is your take up spool okay it's 120 size in length, but the inside is cut out for 35 millimeter. And these two caps, right, these would go into your 35 millimeter film, okay, your film canister, right? And you would load it, and you can shoot 35 millimeter film on, actually, on any 120 film camera, all right? But this will be for another day. And the reason I have the black line on here is <clears throat> I calculated that since you can't open the back and look at and look at the frame, right? 
<clears throat> sorry, uh, I had to calculate that one full revolution was for each frame without getting any overlap. All right, but we'll put this aside. That's going to be another whole uh, lesson on how to shoot 35 millimeter film in your 120, which came out pretty cool. Okay, let's move on. Um, now, I don't know if I discussed yet good price, how to get a good price. Okay, when I bought this camera on eBay, uh, it was from a reputable seller, right? He was, or she was very, very honest and said, everything works fine. Aperture blades are clean. Aperture blades are smooth. Shutter works, right? Shutter works. Everything works fine. Oh, it's still on B. All right. Everything works fine. Right. Shutter. Everything works fine. Uh, aperture blades, no oil. Shutter, fine. Um, inside, clean. All right. The seller was correct on all those points. All right. Inside, nice and clean. Okay. Lens clean, no haze, no fungus. Okay, no scratches. Everything looked great. Okay, everything looked fine. And the seller also said many light leaks from the bellows. Bellows had a lot of holes. Basically, each corner of both sides of the bellows had holes. The top had some cracking. It's from the 50s. All right, it probably was from 54. Um, not really sure, but uh, I put down my best offer, twenty bucks. Um, and I, when you do a best offer, you can sometimes put a uh, you make a little note before you send your best offer. And I put considering the light leaks, would you consider twenty bucks? Boom, accepted, got it for twenty bucks. Okay. Now, when it came, this everything was correct. The lens was good, shutter, aperture blades, everything was fine. Now, I had to repair these bellows. I have a couple of uh, videos out there on how to do it on this channel, but I'll just go over it briefly. On Amazon or in a hardware store, doesn't matter, even in Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever, they sell a jar in the electrical aisle of liquid electrical tape comes in a jar about this big about that round liquid electrical tape and black okay it's a few bucks you get it you open it up it you shake it it's liquid but it has the a, a very viscous it has the consistency of like a pudding so you get your little artist paintbrush and you dip it in and you go over every single part e even the parts that aren't torn you do the whole 100% of the bellows, giving a few extra uh, touches to the corners that actually have a hole. And it's so thick, it will slowly, right, depending on how many coats you do, it'll slowly make the hole smaller, 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 gone. All right. So you put one application on everywhere on the bellows, everywhere. Get in here, get in the bottom, right? sides top never on the inside only on the outside okay you let it dry overnight you when you look at this the next day after it dries it went from being um like pooling almost you know it's thick it's like if you're painting with yogurt you know it's it's gonna have you know blobs here and there it's it's not gonna look good believe me when it's wet it's not gonna look good you're gonna be disheartened wait till the next day it shrinks right it evaporates what's left is the rubber solids okay it looks great but you're not done because you're still gonna have if it was a hole if it was a pinhole one coat's not enough five five days you don't have to do them in a row you could do it one day coat it leave it overnight leave it for five nights do it again, leave it alone. So in other words, what I'm getting at is five coats, 
with a minimum of overnight drying for each coat. And now it's absolutely perfect. Uh, how do you check? How do I know? All right, it's very simple. You would shut the lights off. Let me see if I could shut most of the lights off in this room. All right. You take a torch, as my friends call it in the UK, flashlight. You open the back. You open the back of your camera. Okay. And you put your eye in here. Okay. You take the flashlight and you shine it. Right. And you're going to shine it over every single part of the bellows. And you're going to keep your eye in here. Now, this would be in a totally dark room. All right? Not a dark room like you're going to develop film, but a darkened room. All right? And you, if there's a light leak, if there's a pinhole, believe me, it'll show. Okay? Because you're going to use a very, it's a very bright flashlight. Okay? Now... When you're done with that, do the reverse. Put the put the torch, put the flashlight inside, and you're gonna look, right? You're gonna look from the outside to see if you see any pinholes. Okay, that's how you test for pinholes in bellows. It's very simple. You don't, unless the bellows are torn wide open, right? Don't buy that camera. It's not worth it. All right. That needs a full replacement. It, please, this is ridiculous. We're talking about pinholes, right? Even even if it's worn to the point where you can, it's no longer black, where you can see the brown canvas, right? It's still repairable, but as long as it's intact, not torn away from the body or from the from the lens. Okay. Now, having said that, having said that, there's one drawback. One drawback do not fold your camera up all right don't don't recess it back into the camera once you have repaired this my way with electrical liquid tape liquid electrical tape all right once you've done that okay this is rubber now it's not, it wasn't meant for this application it's not wet it's not sticky it's not sticky at all all right it feels like Believe it or not, it feels like uh, if you were touching a leather coat. It feels like leather. All right, it's not sticky, and it's not sticky in the summer either when it gets hot. But here's the point: if you keep your camera stored, right, closed, because it's, ha it's happened to me, after I let it dry for thirty days, and then I kept the camera stored closed. When I opened it, I got a little freaked out because it, you hear. You can hear it. Uh, you can hear the bellows. I don't want to say stuck together, but you hear that. You hear that sound. You know, as if it was these were all stuck together. But I don't want to take a chance. I don't want you to take a chance. And this is not so big. I mean, look at this. This camera is not so big that it's obtrusive to uh, keep the bellows open, even when you're out shooting. All right. Yeah, it's no longer a pocket camera once you've repaired the bellows. If you get a model where the bellows are fine, sure, close it up, right? It closes up, and then you have a pocket medium format camera. But we're talking about guys that want a format camera, and they don't really care that this doesn't fold up anymore. They want a good camera, okay? Um, let me just touch on one other thing. Okay, many times, many times when you buy a vintage camera, okay, um, you know the lugs that are usually here on the ca on modern cameras, right, that you would put a neck strap on? Well, they're usually on the case, the leather case, right? Well, that leather case is long gone, all right? And there's no, there's no neck strap lugs. What do you do? This, I've been using this for years on my vintage cameras. This is just a tripod mount right this is just a tripod mount uh threaded nut okay 
These aren't expensive at all. Okay. And then you get a wrist strap, right? There's a cheap wrist strap, all cotton, right? And you get a you get a key ring, right? You get a key ring, right? And then you guys are smart enough. You guys can figure out how to attach this, right, to your neck strap. To, I'm sorry, to your wrist strap, right? I could have bypassed, right? This is this is what's going to go in the tripod socket. I could have bypassed this little piece, right, and put this key ring right into here. There is a hole here, right? But I just I just did it. Okay, so. You take this, you take your tripod nut, you screw it in to the bottom of your camera, okay. Now you have a wrist strap. Now you have a wrist strap for your camera where there was no lugs on the camera to attach a wrist strap or a neck strap. Okay? Now you're safe. This I I believe in using anything because you know why? You're walking around and you have this on, on your wrist. By the way, this one comes with this neat little piece of leather here, right? So it it won't it won't fall off your wrist. All right? But you're walking around and let's say you have to get your wallet out and you want to buy a cup of coffee, right? You could just let go of this. You could just let go of this, right? Like this, and you can work. Now you have two hands free. But because this doesn't fold up and, and go into your pocket, right? It's nice to have a wrist strap, okay? So it's another little helpful hint that I use uh, on vintage cameras that don't have any lugs, right? No lugs? You go with this, plan B. Screw this right into the tripod hole in the bottom of your vintage camera because I got to tell you something I have not seen a vintage camera going back to 100 years old that didn't have a tripod socket so I've seen tons of vintage cameras with no lugs for a wrist strap or a neck strap but I've never seen one without a tripod socket Okay, and this is your friend right here. This is your friend. Wrist strap, you guys probably have tons of wrist straps around, okay? And you just buy these. These are tripod, you look it up, they're just tripod screws, okay? Uh, I think I might have even taken this one off my Black Rapid uh, strap, right? If you need a brand name, to go by, you can look up Black Rapid. In fact, this is this is Black Rapid. It has a little R there for Rapid right there. So there you go. All right. So that's a little idea. Okay. So we've talked about the bellows, the, how to repair them, and just don't just don't close it up anymore. Do yourself a favor. Can you? Yeah. Will you be upset when you open it up after a couple of months and you hear that? sounds sticky but it's not sticky it's just that when you have you know rubber like that together for so long and then you want to open it you know it's just a sound that i don't like because you repaired it and it works so good the, the the photographs are so good you don't want anything to happen to it so just leave it open and like i said look at the size of this thing look at it look at it it's the size of your hand for god's sakes Look at this thing. It's so tiny, and it's a medium format camera. Okay, I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little excited. Okay, uh, let's, uh, let's see what else I have. I made, I made some notes here. Um, all right, so loading this camera, pretty simple, all right? You just open that, open the latch, and there you go. There's a beautiful interior okay you would take your used roll used spool right and you put it over here and you put your fresh roll here these have beautiful chrome free wheeling rollers right it's to prevent scratches it goes right across now 
Let me tell you something about German engineering, okay? To keep the camera small, right? To have a small footprint and height, okay? To get this, let me just see here. To get this roll, to get this spool, to get this spool in and out, right? There's, there's very little tolerance here. There's, there's no room. Let me show you how the German engineers figured a way to get the spool in and out on both sides. Watch this, right? Here is a little tiny, there's a little tiny, let me just get some good light on there. Eh, I don't know. All right, there's a little tiny place for your thumb. And you just pick this up. Okay, let me just get a better angle. Look at this. You pick this up, okay, like this. And you push it out. You push it up. You push it up. Look at this. You see this? Look at this engineering. It not only goes out towards you, right? But it goes up. It goes up. It gives you that extra three millimeters, right? To remove your spool or to put the fr their fresh roll of film in. Right? Look at this. You put it in. You drop this down. Right? And then it locks in. Oh my goodness. Other manufacturers of cameras, of film cameras should do this. Okay? Out and then up. Up. Look at this. Comes right out. Now, watch this. On the take-up side, okay, same thing, but it's not on the top. It's on the bottom. Watch. You pull it out and down. Look at this. Then you take your take-up spool, all right, you put it up here, and then it's just lock in the two uh, spool pins on the top, bottom, And you're done. And there's your take-up spool. Locked in. Locked in. Not going anywhere. Unreal. All right? So when this is, this will be full now when you finish taking photographs, right? All your film goes from here to here. Now it's time to take this out. Just pull this pin, right? You pull this little tab out. Okay? And down. And look at this. Look how smooth it comes out. All because of this engineering right here. This German engineering right here. Unreal. Unreal. Let's just put it back in here because I'm going to need it in this side anyway. All right. You just line it up. Up and down. Look at this done good to go unreal okay uh when i bought this camera right i opened it up and in here was this sticker all right this is one of those old decals where you had to dip it in water remember that dip the decal in water and then put it down and then slide the paper off it says photo heikman spire rh rhineland this is the camera store where this was sold in the 50s in Germany. Speyer Rhineland. The name of the camera store was Photo Heikman. Oh, boy. That's so nostalgic. Ugh, it's just those little things that make you happy. <laughs> okay. So, um, before, before and after you uh, load your film, always give... A little dust off. Okay. And you're a blower. Okay. There's the red window that you have to make sure no light leaks. That's why we use the uh, gaffer's tape over there. Okay. Now, go to my website, callmytaverna.com. There's a search window. Put in the search window. Just put in 
ADOX, A-D-O-X. And the photographs taken with this will come up. And you will lose your mind because this 1950s, nothing automatic, bellows film camera with manual focus, guest focus, I call it, right? Wait till you see how awesome it is. And I took them after I repaired the light leaks. Just gorgeous. That's all you can say. Just absolutely wonderful. Great camera. Very inexpensive, right? I'm just looking at my notes to make sure I said everything I wanted to say. All right. And I think that's it. Oh, do you want to look at that? Nah, I'll make another video about shooting 35 millimeter film inside your medium format camera. So interesting. And there we have it. The ADOX Golf Model 63S. Born in the 50s in Speyer, Germany. Uh, from the ADOX company. Very happy, very inexpensive. And uh, I wish you guys good luck. And since it is New Year's Eve for 2021, going into 2022, I wish you guys the best of health. Let's just say it. We all know what the heck's going on. Good health. Uh, good picture taking. A lot of my friends, uh, they sign off on their channels, their photography channels. They say, here's the good light. <laughs> and if you guys are true YouTube photography channel geeks, you'll know who that is. Here's the good light. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, guys. Uh, please subscribe. Okay. Right over here. Right here. Hit that red button if you would, please. Um, hit the like button. Thumbs up. Uh, email me anytime you want about photography, cameras, gear, film, developing my background, 48 years of photography, photojournalism. I've been published on magazine covers, mag uh, newspapers. Okay, guys. Uh, almost 2,000 hours of classroom training formal training so uh what else black and white photo at aol.com that's my email call my taverna.com that's my e uh, website subscribe hit the like button but most of all guys happy new year stay healthy because if you don't if you don't take care of yourself you're not going to be able to press the button and take great pictures Bye, guys.